Hi there, everybody. My name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of the book, Playing Solo Jazz Piano, and the book's Jazz Piano Fundamentals. And today, I want to talk about something really super fundamental, very basic, but it's actually, I think, been a really useful framework for myself and for some of my students to think about changing your improvisation. So the basic framework here is that one way that we can think about improvisation is in terms of different components. And there's a lot of ways to, you know, to subdivide improvisation, but I'm going to share one that I find very helpful, and I think you will too. So I've made this beautiful drawing here um, of three kind of dials. I think about the, these as three different dials. You can, maybe you're having a mixer or something. And the three dials that we're going to change are going to be scales, by which I mean stepwise movement. Okay. Um, arpeggios, by which I mean leaping between different notes of the chord, and non-chord tones, things like neighbor tones, enclosures, etc. So I found this useful because sometimes my students play for me, and I will find that one of these um, one of these dials is turned all the way up, <laughs> cranking it, and maybe the others are turned much lower. And 90% of the time for me with my students when this happens is that scales are cranked all the way up and arpeggios and non-chord tones are very low. And I think this is 100% the fault of jazz educators because when we teach people about how to play jazz, how to approach harmony, we think in terms of scales. So I wanna play for you first an improvisation that has scales dialed all the way up. So um, let's use the tune tune-up. Simple tune. Okay, so here's an improvisation with lots and lots of scales and very few arpeggios or non chord tones. One, two, one, two, three, four. kind of curious how you might think about that improvisation. When I hear that, I think that sounds pretty okay. I think my articulation is pretty good. I'm clearly playing the correct scale and not playing any wrong notes, but it lacks, there, there's always like a certain wishy-washy quality to me when I hear somebody play only scales, because it just kind of feels like you're going up a little bit and then you're going down a little bit and then you're going up a little bit and you're going down a little bit. And in a sense, that's music, but it, uh, I think there's a lot more that we can do. So when I hear a student play like that, I first try to get them to, you know, essentially bring this level of scales down. Well, actually, this is a lie. I'm going to tell you how I really do it. I tell them to play a solo using no scales and only arpeggios. And I see whether they can do that. So what might that solo sound like? Well, maybe it'll sound something like this. One, two, one, two. So I wonder how that solo strikes you. To me, I would rather hear that second solo, actually, than the first solo. And if you're not sure, okay, what's the difference here? Or how would I go about playing a solo 
using only arpeggios, I would say, you know, when you're playing only arpeggios, try to use uh, no steps. Okay, so no notes that are a whole step or a half step next to each other. Now, of course, sometimes we could say that like, for instance, if we're on this E minor seven, we could say that the ninth and the third are both chord tones, so they could both be included in an arpeggio. But I would try not to use multiple steps in a row, at the very least, okay? So there's a solo that turns up the dial all on arpeggios and really tries to turn down the, style, the dial on scales. Now, realistically, we don't really want either of those solos. What we want is something that kind of splits the difference. Um, <laughs> I know these visuals are really high tech, um, I really have I, my graphics department uh, budget has really been going through the roof lately. I hope that you are, are appreciating that um, because it's just the best of technology. And this is why I'm such a YouTube star. Okay. Um, probably in reality, we want scales and arpeggios somewhat even. Now, different players are going to have different ratios of scales and arpeggios. Louis Armstrong, for instance, tends to use a lot of arpeggios and very few scales just as one example. Um, when you look at Charlie Parker, you see a pretty solid mix of scales and arpeggios. So let me try one where the scales and arpeggios are essentially even. So hopefully you'll hear this. And let's see if uh, this is working for me uh, yet. I just need to do something like this. All right, so now you can watch for scales and arpeggios. I'll let you see my face just in case for some strange reason you want to. Here we go, one, two, three, four. some mixture, roughly equal parts, scales and arpeggios, and I think it's sounding like a pretty good solo. But, oh no, my visual, my beautiful visual. It's, we're doing a weird green flashing thing. Um, so, as you're about to see, the third category though is the thing that's missing, which is non-chord tone. So, so far, I've only been using notes of the scales. So let's dial up those non-chord tones and we're gonna get a more and more beboppy sound as we add in more non-chord tones, okay? So when I'm thinking about non-chord tones, the biggest thing is that I'm thinking about notes a half step below notes of the chord that we're gonna resolve into. So if we're in, you know, thinking about E minor, I'm thinking about resolving into each of the notes of those chords by half step, and then occasionally using an enclosure. Maybe we'll use some neighbor tone or some passing tones. But those are kind of the basic non chord tones. Also, I'm going to take some liberties and I'm going to use altered tones for my dominant chords. So let's see how this sounds now with scales, arpeggios, and non-chord tones all represented. So we've got...
problems with my thing again, but that's okay. So this is just a mental trick that you can use, and it's a good way to kind of evaluate your playing, to think about these three different dials, and then evaluate, okay, what, you know, how far am I turning up my scales? How far am I turning up my arpeggios? How far am I turning up my non-chord tones? Um, now, this three-part definition, or these three categories, certainly are not the only three possible categories. Um, you could think of a million other dials, or you know, however you like to think about it, a pie chart. You could think about different rhythmic units, how many eighth notes versus quarter notes versus long notes versus rests am I using, right? You could add in how many grace notes, turns, ornaments am I using? Um, how much am I repeating? Do I want to turn up the dial on repeating myself? So there's a lot of ways that you can think about these dials, but I think this scale arpeggio, non-chord tone, kind of triptych, um, is a nice way to help evaluate your playing. So thanks for dealing with me through uh, some technical difficulties. If you made it this far, I use the word triptych, uh, which is a very fancy word. So put that in the comments. Um, and if you like this kind of just basic thinking, you might really enjoy Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book One. You can grab it from jeremysiskin.com. Thanks for listening, guys. See you later.